It's all about your health, your wellness. Radio MD. RadioMD.com. Get healthier, get fit, eat better, have a richer quality of life. Health on the go. Staying well with Melanie Cole, MS. Well, now that the Affordable Care Act is in place, and it hasn't completely started yet, but we've seen little bits and pieces trickling in. It's quite confusing. It's huge. And people are having a lot of trouble understanding if it's good, bad, indifferent, if it's going to help them or hurt them. My guest is Professor of Public Policy at Harvard, John F. Kennedy School of Government, Amitabh Chandra. Welcome to the show, Amitabh. Now tell me about what do you see as far as the benefits? I'd like to talk in this segment about the consumer protections that were put into place. So let's sort of list them out and and say how they were different than they used to be. Okay. Um, Thank you for having me back on the show. The name of the act, even though we refer to it as the Affordable Care Act, the name of the act is, is actually PPACA, which stands for Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. So it really does a lot on the patient protection side. It's less clear to me that it does something on the affordable side. So in terms of the patient protections that are built into the act, the first one that I would start off with is just the benefit of insuring the uninsured. So something like 30 million Americans will receive health insurance. Why is this valuable? It's valuable not necessarily because it will improve their health, but because it's going to reduce financial uncertainty. And we know that financial uncertainty decimates human beings. Human beings hate uncertainty. We hate financial uncertainty in particular. We don't like being caught um, with medical bankruptcies and large medical bills when we fall sick. So at least for 30 million Americans, the single biggest protection that, that they will receive is that they will be insured. Well, and I, when you talk about financial insecurity, but health insecurity too, I mean, if you're worried about your health or waiting for test results, nothing's worse than that. And And when you feel these things... I feel that it's been shameful all these years that a country such as ours should have so many people that go bankrupt because of their medical bills. I couldn't agree with you more. I think um, there are people in the United States who have argued that half of all bankruptcies in the U.S. are medically associated. So half of all medical bankruptcies are medical bankruptcies. And even those who disagree with that number say that it's one in five. So let's just take the one in five number. What it's saying is that 20% of all bankruptcies that happen in the United States are bankruptcies that occurred because of massive medical spending that the patient really wasn't able to afford or pay for at the end of the day. Wow, that's just unbelievable. So now we're going to insure 30 million people that didn't have insurance before. And what about like children? They There was denying coverage of children. There was also pre-existing conditions, information online. Let's talk about some of these other things as well. So there are these other protections that are built into the bill. It becomes harder and harder for insurers to deny coverage uh, on the basis of pre-existing conditions. It becomes harder for insurers to charge whatever premium they want to someone just because they're an elderly person. So that's all terrific. Um, And those provisions will kick in on January the 1st of 2014. The law does two other things which protect patients. The first thing is it simplifies a very complex landscape of regulations that made it very difficult for consumers to figure out why their premium costs so much. So take two consumers, one who lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the other one who lives in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky and Cincinnati, Ohio are essentially across the river from each other, But there was a very complicated set of federal, state, and local mandates that were affecting the pricing of premiums across state lines. And PPACA simplifies that. And simplification is really key to get patients involved and engaged in shopping around for cheaper services. I love that. I love that you're saying that it's going to simplify it because as someone who's been self-employed for 25 years... And having to buy my own health insurance, the cost of the premiums and trying to figure it all out, it can be dizzying, even for someone who thinks they kind of know the system. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. And I think related to the, the, the marketplace for premiums for the self-employed being dizzying, 
they were also unfair. So many health insurance contracts in the United States were not really health insurance contracts. And by that, I mean many of them had a max amount that they would pay for hospital care on a daily basis. So there would be a max like, well, I will only pay $2,000 a, a day for hospital care. So, Melanie, if you need service that requires $40,000 worth of health care on the first day, the insurer would only cover $2,000 of that. Now, that's been done away. There were lifetime caps on what health insurance would pay. That's been done away with. This is important because the reason people buy health insurance is because they hate those really rare, really big events. So in some sense, people were buying an, a funny product. It was a product that was like health insurance, but it wasn't insurance of the type that we really needed. So the, the PPAC certainly does away with all of those things. Well, and I think people are also confused about, you know, we look at all these protections and consumer protections. Are people or are they not going to be able to buy insurance on their own, or are they forced into a government program? No, they're absolutely not forced into a government program at all. In fact, for those of us who cheer for markets and free enterprise, many of us, people like yourself who are self-employed, will be able to go to an exchange, and that exchange is not run by the government, although it can be based on what the state decides to do. But on that exchange, one picks a health plan that is being offered by Aetna or United or Cigna. There really is no government plan on that exchange. The government comes in and subsidizes health insurance for people who can't afford that private coverage. But that's very different than saying there's a government plan. What the government's really doing is it's saying, you go buy health insurance from a private insurer, and if you can't afford it, based on your income, we will give you a subsidy. But that's not the same as saying it's a government plan. Boy, I'll tell you, it is really, you just hear so much stuff in the media. You really just do. Now, you've talked about the limiting the caps. You know, now there's no more cap on a medical, you know, services and pre-existing conditions. Children now, till 26, can, right. be, can be on your health insurance. Talk about well visits, because to me, preventive medicine is going to save all of us a lot of money, and now we can get our colonoscopies. Now, I didn't have to choose this year between my mammogram and my pap smear and my physical. I got to get them all. I think one of the great things about this bill is that preventive care is free, and that's important because we know that people often use that 10 or $20 copay that they would have to pay for a preventive care visit as an excuse for why they're not going to get that care. And, and uh, what you're saying is, you know, if we act early and we screen early, we can catch a lot of things before they become really complicated. I completely agree with that. That said, there's not a lot of evidence that wellness and prevention by itself will save us from the fiscal train wreck that awaits us in 10 or 20 years. People who are fit and people who are healthy will still fall sick. And when they fall sick, they will need access to high-quality health care. So wrap it up for us, because we only have less than a minute left now. So in the last 30 seconds, it's certainly not enough time to talk about this complicated of a topic. But wrap up the consumer protections and the benefits, the things that are good about this. I think while the Affordable Care Act may be imperfect on net, it is a huge step in the right direction. And it's huge because it protects patients. It protects them from financial uncertainty. It protects them from unfair insurance practices, and it makes preventative care free. So this is all a step in the right direction. It's all a step in the right direction, and really, you do need to learn more about it because we have to be an advocate. We have to be responsible for our own health care. And by doing that, learning and studying and listening to programs like this, that's how we're all going to stay well. This is Melanie Cole for Radio MD.